In the next objective, we're going to look at the different classes of organic molecules, and we're going to learn that there are four major classes of organic molecules. I'm going to take these in the order that we're going to discuss them in this module. So once we cover these four major classes of organic molecules, then we're going to have the entire module covered. We'll study, for example, carbohydrates in objectives 5 through 12. The term carbohydrate means watered carbon. Carbo is carbon, hydrate is water. So this indicates that the structure of a carbohydrate is a ratio of one carbon to one water. So, for example, the carbohydrates that we're going to look at in this course are going to have the structure C5H10O5 or C6H12O6. We've already looked at glucose and fructoses, which are examples of carbohydrates. Here the X is 6, so these will be C6H12O6. There are other possibilities for molecules we're going to call carbohydrates, but fortunately for us, we won't see those in human medicine, so we don't need to learn them. So the only ones we're going to worry about are C5H10O5, which has one exception that's very notable that we'll see later on, and C6H12O6. Anytime we see those structural formulas, we're going to know we're dealing with carbohydrates. These are very water-soluble because they have a lot of oxygens. Lipids may have a few oxygens, they may even have a phosphorus atom in there somewhere, but they're going to have a lot more carbon than oxygen, so they're going to be made up mostly of carbons and hydrogens, and that arrangement is very hydrophobic. Hydrophobic means water-hating or water-fearing. Hydro is water, phobic is fearing, right? Because if you have a phobia of something, then you're afraid of that. So hydrophobic molecules repel water. It's as though they're afraid of water. What sorts of substances do we know of that repel water commonly? Well, lipids, fats, oils, waxes are water repellent. And so these are examples of lipids that we're going to find in biological systems. The next major class of organic molecules that we're going to study are the proteins. And as I mentioned briefly earlier, proteins are made up of amino acids. Amino acids always have the molecules carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen in them. We know that has to be true because I said earlier that amino acids all have a carboxyl group on them. The formula for a carboxyl is COOH, so that takes care of the carbon, the hydrogen, and the oxygen. And I said that on the other end of the molecule, there's an amino group. An amino group is a nitrogen with two hydrogens. So they all, must all have carbons, hydrogens, oxygens, and nitrogens. Some amino acids include sulfur as an atom that's included in them, and we'll look at those examples later on. The fourth and last major class of organic molecules that we're going to study in this course and in this module are the nucleic acids. Nucleic acids are made up of a backbone of sugars, those carbohydrates that we saw earlier, plus what's called a nitrogenous base. And nitrogenous means that they have, they're arrangements of atoms that have lots of nitrogens in them, that have a higher proportion of nitrogens in them. So they still have carbons, but they have a lot of nitrogen mixed in. We'll see an example of that in a few slides. These are going to form ring structures where the, the atoms come around and bind back to themselves in a, in a ring arrangement. If they make one ring, we call them pyrimidines. Examples of these that you may have heard of before are the bases in RNA and DNA called uracil, thymine, and cytosine. And if they make two rings, we call them purines. Examples of purines are adenine and guanine. We'll use those names and their abbreviations later on. If the backbone is deoxyribose, then we call it deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA. If the backbone is ribose, then we call it ribonucleic acid, or RNA. Now, we already know most of the information that I've told you about 
in this objective because we're used to eating things and hopefully most of the things that you eat on an average day were once alive. If you spend a lot of your time eating things that were never alive, then you've got some kind of serious problem. But most of us like to eat things that are alive, and things that are alive have molecules that fit into these four major classes. Now in terms of the food that we eat, usually nucleic acids are not a major constituent of the food that we eat. So we're not going to worry about those, but if we look at the nutrition facts label, we see the same three of the four molecules of life or classes of organic molecules, carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. So we talked about carbohydrates before, we talked about lipids, and we talked about proteins. As we go through these different parts of the module, don't feel like any of this material is unfamiliar. We're going to be putting information that you already have together in different ways, but I want to try to convince you that you should have a lot of familiarity with the material that I'm presenting here. This is an example of something that's really familiar to us that we see every day, but we've never thought about in terms of our biomedical core course, and I want to get you to think about it in terms of a biomedical core course.